In this video, we will show how to troubleshoot if you have the symptoms of no image or a blank screen, but you can see an image on the screen with a flashlight and you do have audio. This is for Vizio TV model number E400I-B2. This video applies to the following part numbers. Power supply part number 56.04115.000 LED driver board part number 55.76N04.A01 and the panel number LSC 400 HM06 LEDs are panel specific so you must match the panel sticker number to be sure you have the correct replacement LEDs. In this video, the test that we are showing is checking the voltages. Testing the voltages will help to determine if the backlighting problem is being caused by the power supply slash LED board or the actual LEDs themselves. If you have not run the flashlight slash backlight test, please click the link in the video to the flashlight test. If there is not a link to click, please go to our channel and find the flashlight test video. After running the flashlight test, if you determine that you do have an image on the screen while using a flashlight and you have audio but no backlights, continue this troubleshooting video. In order to continue troubleshooting, you will need to have the skills, experience, and tools necessary to check voltages on the power supply slash LED board. It is necessary that you take the proper precautions to protect yourself as checking voltages can be dangerous on a TV that is powered on. I have begun by removing the screws and the back cover off my TV. We will be running the test on the LED driver board as that is the board that has the connection for the power to the LEDs in the panel. We have highlighted this board in the video. As we take a closer look at the power supply slash LED board, here is the cable connection that runs from the power supply to the LEDs. I will be checking the voltages at this connection. As we take a closer look at the LED driver board, here is the cable connection that runs from the LED driver board to the LEDs. This board shows five test points for checking the voltages to the LEDs. Before I begin testing the points, I will plug in my TV and either on the keypad controller or using the remote, I will power on the TV. I will test each of the five points individually with my positive probe on my multimeter. Then I will put the negative end on the metal part of the panel to ground it. I will start by testing each of the points on the back side of the connector. We also show an image of the side angle showing the probe on the test point. I get a measurement of 37 volts at each of the test points, which is good. This shows that the LED driver board and LEDs are working like normal. Before I begin testing the points, I will plug in my TV and either on the keypad controller or using the remote. I will power on the TV. If the voltages were at zero or lower than our normal numbers, that would show that there could be a problem with the power supply board. As you can see, I'm getting a measurement at or close to zero for all of the test points. The next step in troubleshooting this is to retest the points with the cable disconnected. First, I will unplug the TV and then disconnect the cable running from the LED driver to the LEDs. Then I will power back on the TV and I can retest each of the points. This time I will not be able to test on the back side of the connector since it is disconnected. So I will test the points from the top. You could also test them on the front of the connector. On each of the test points I am getting a measurement of 32 volts. This shows that the LED driver board is working and there may be a problem with the LEDs. If I was receiving zero volts with the cable connected and I was receiving zero volts with the cable disconnected, then it would show that there is most likely a problem with the LED driver board 
and or the power supply board and they can be replaced to see if that fixes the problem. If you decide to replace the LEDs in your TV, here are a few recommendations. It is recommended that the replacement be done by a trained professional as during the replacement process there is a chance you could damage the TV panel. If you damage your TV panel, it is not fixable and your TV will no longer operate as normal. Always replace all of the LED strips in your TV at the same time. If one of them has shorted out, there is a high likelihood of another having the same problem. When searching for replacement LED strips, be sure to find the panel information for your TV and search using that information. Panel info can be located on a sticker on the panel or sometimes on a buffer board in the TV. LED strips are panel specific and not model specific. If you do need to replace the power supply board, be sure to find a replacement that matches your original part number on the board.